How to use the auto takeoff icon in PractiCAD. The auto takeoff icon is in your automatic panel on your PractiCAD ribbon. This feature is designed to allow you to export duct from PractiCAD to PractiCAM. Once the duct is in PractiCAM, you will be able to get a report, an estimate, or download to CNC such as plasma or coil line. We're going to click on the auto takeoff icon and PractiCAD is going to open up the export field. Currently, there are four tabs with different choices underneath them. We have the Selection tab, Condition tab, Group tab, and Takeoff tab. The first two tabs, the Selection and the Conditions, we already cover in the videos on Auto Selection, Automatics. They are called How to Use Auto Selection, Selection tab full, and How to Use Auto Selection, Condition tab full. Please watch those tutorials first before moving on to How to Use the Group tab and Takeoff tabs. Once we've chosen the proper selection and condition parameters, we now must decide whether or not we'd like to download all of the fittings on the drawing or all the fittings in our selection set at once or break them into predefined groups. Currently under selection, we've chosen to download fittings on the entire drawing. For conditions, we have selected all the different fittings by checking each library. Currently, we have not specified any specific conditions for these fittings. We're just going to download all the fittings on the drawing. However, going into the group tab, we can now decide, do we want to download them all in one large takeoff or should we break them up into intelligent groups based on conditions we decide so that when they get downloaded to Practicam, they're already split up into these groups. In order to do that, we must first decide how many groups we'd like to use. Currently on our drawing, we have a duct system that consists of three different colors, green, blue, and yellow. The green duct happens to be drawn with six inch water gauge specification. This is gonna represent our high pressure group. The yellow duct was drawn with a two inch water gauge specification. This is going to represent our low pressure group. And the blue duct happens to be under the fabrication level order only because this duct we're buying and we'd like to order it. So we'd like three groups, high pressure, low pressure, and order. So what we're going to do is bring our export window back up. We're underneath the group tab and we're now going to create a group by clicking on the add icon, the green check. When we do that, Practicad is going to ask us to name a group. We're going to call this group order. We're going to hit enter. Once we've named the group, PractiCAD is now going to ask us what conditions do the fittings have to meet in order to be part of the group order. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up our condition set. And there are tutorials under the condition tabs that explain how to utilize these conditions. Here we have all the properties in the software and the one we're going to use for the group order is going to be fabrication level. We're going to hit F, it's going to jump right over to the F parameters, and we're going to say fabrication equals, and we're going to choose order. Here you can see the three fabrication levels. So by doing this, we're now going to have a group created called order if some of the duct in our selection criteria has the fabrication level equaling order. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to hit add again, and we're going to add a second group. We're going to just call it high pressure, we'll call it HP. Here what we're going to do is say if duct, and we're going to hit the letter S for specification, it's going to bring us to our S parameters, we're going to say if specification equals 6 inch water gauge, we want it to go to the high pressure group. So we've chosen the condition specification equals 6 inch water gauge. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit add one more time and we're going to choose the low pressure. We're going to write low pressure and low pressure is going to be if the specification equals, and we'll say two inch for this tutorial, specification equals two inch. And that's going to be the duct that's going to classify the group low pressure. You will notice when you add more to this list, the practical will open up the delete icon to delete plus the up and down arrows. For example, we have LP lit. If we hit up, it's going to move it up in order and down, down in order. Now, order of conditions is important. 
And under the tutorials for the Practicad layer mechanism, we show and explain why you want to order things properly. Practicad, when it goes to decide what should go in what group, is always going to start with the first choice here, see if the conditions meet the selection criteria, and if it does, it's going to put it under order. If it doesn't meet these conditions, it's going to jump to the next and say, does my specification equal 6-inch water gauge? If the answer is yes, it goes in the group high pressure. If it doesn't meet those conditions, it'll jump to the next one and so on. Please watch the tutorials on how to design the Practicat layer mechanism and ordering. Once we've got our group set, now what we can do is press OK. When we do that, it's going to export all of our duct. But you can see before it exports it, it's sorted into a group, high pressure, order, and low pressure. And when it comes into Practicam, Practicam is going to design takeoffs, and the name of these group is going to be embedded into those takeoffs. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to press OK and export the duct, and now we're going to jump to Practicam and show you how it would be sorted inside Practicam. Here we're inside Practicam and you can see that after we've downloaded the duct off our drawing, Practicad had created the name, and this is job name, Practicad training videos, the drawing name, which we called exporting automatics, and we'll show you where that is in a minute, and then it designed three separate takeoffs based on the group name, high pressure, and inside the high pressure, all the high pressure fittings. Low pressure, underneath low pressure, we have all the low pressure fittings. And under order, you can see that we have all the fittings that should be ordered. You'll notice that the fabrication level over here on the right happens to say order, 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 order. So groups will automatically download from Practicad to Practicam and they'll be designed into separate takeoffs. This will make it easier for nesting, sorting, and inputting. Jumping back to Practicad, you can see up here that we had named the job Practicad Training Videos. We had named the drawing Exporting Automatics. So Practicad used these names to create those folders, and then it used the group names to create the names of the takeoffs in Practicam. Once we've chosen the proper names and the proper conditions to meet these groups, we can now choose between three current choices for each group. For each group we have created, we can choose between no limit, limit by quantity, or limit by entries. Currently, no limit means that if we download this job, there is no limit to the number of fittings that can be placed into a particular group. For example, for the HP group, we have specification equals 6 inch water gauge. That's the condition. If there's 10,000 fittings on the drawing that meet that condition, when we download this to Practicam, there'll be 10,000 fittings in that takeoff. Now, many users feel that they don't want to nest that many fittings together. So they like to use the options for limit by quantity and limit by entries to reduce that and divide sub takeoffs or subgroups. Currently, let's see what happens if we run no limit for the HP group. We're going to press OK. Practicad's opening up the export window to show us what fittings are going to be exported. And here under group HP, you can see that it's been called HP underscore 2. And you can see if you add these numbers up that we currently have 10 fittings that are being downloaded. Each fitting is counted as quantity 1. So if you take your time and add up these numbers, you'll see that currently there is 10 fittings on this drawing that are going to be downloaded. Even though for the rectangular, there are three pieces that are identical, they're listed as quantity three. Here we have spiral duct, there are two pieces that are identical. So they're listed in one row, but it's under quantity two. And then we have one for five more different fittings. So the total is 10. So if we have no limit, we can put as many fittings inside this particular group as we'd like. The limit by quantity option allows us to limit the number of fittings that get placed into a specific group by quantity. For example, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the high pressure group we have here. 
And instead of no limit, we're going to choose limit by quantity and we're going to say five. Now, Practicad defines the quantity of a fitting by the entity itself. In other words, if we have three pieces of duct that are identical in parameters, quantity is three. That would be the total quantity. So if we say limit by quantity five, that means we cannot have more than five pieces of duct underneath the group HP. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say limit by quantity five. We're going to press OK. Practicad is going to open up the export field. And what we're going to do is take a look at what we have here. Notice that we've now got two groups for HP. The first group, if you take a look over here in the file path, is HP underscore two. And inside, you can see that we have three pieces of identical rec duct and two pieces of identical spiral. So they're in the exact same row. They're not separated. That is a total of five fittings because the total quantity is five. That was the limit by quantity. Therefore, Practicat has created another group HP. You can see in the file path, it's HP underscore three. And here you can see the remaining five fittings are there. Therefore, we set limit by quantity, and that simply means we cannot have more than five fittings. Regardless of them being identical, five fittings is the maximum. So when we download the Practicam now, we will have a takeoff called HP underscore two and HP underscore three. The limit by entries field is a different way of limiting the number of fittings we get in a takeoff. What Practicad defines an entry is a particular item. It is not based on the quantity of items. For example, if we have two pieces of identical spiral duct, we have quantity two, but we have entries one. If we have 10 pieces of rectangular duct that are identical in all of their parameters, and we have 10 pieces of spiral duct that are identical in all of their parameters, our total quantity is 20, but our total entries is two. It basically accounts for identical items as one entry. So in this particular case, we're gonna to go to the high pressure group and we're going to, instead of having limit by quantity five, as you see here, we're going to go to limit by entries and we're going to say five. And that means that the maximum amount of entries we can have in one group is five. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run an export automatic by pressing OK. And here you can see that Practicat has once again created two groups of HP. However, the first group, which is named HP underscore two, Notice that we have five entries, and each row is an entry. You can see if you add up the quantity, we actually have quantity eight inside this particular takeoff. However, because the rec duct, these three pieces marked as quantity three are identical, Practicat counts that as one entry. So we have one entry of three pieces here, we have one entry of two pieces, so we have two identical pieces of spiral duct. And then we have three entries of obviously unique pieces. So this particular group or takeoff has a limit by entries five. However, the quantity inside the group happens to be eight in this group. If we come over to the other HP, which is marked in the file as HP underscore three, you can see here that we've got two entries and also the quantity is two because there's no duplicates. So limit by entries means basically we're only going to have five line items, but Practicat's gonna count identical items all as one entry. The last portion of the group tab for export automatics is to take a look at the sample field. Now this field will always be grayed out when you are on the group tab. However, when we get to the takeoff tab, we're going to show you how to define where this group is going. But the sample field will be displaying for you inside the group tab exactly what folder this particular group is going to be saved under. So at all times, you can see the file path 
that a specific group is going to go by looking at the sample field. Once again, in the takeoff tab, we're going to go over how to define this field. The last tab we need to go to and answer choices in the Export Automatics is the Takeoff tab. Inside the Takeoff tab, we can choose a variety of options to make sure the Practicad not only downloads our takeoffs to the proper place, but names the takeoffs correctly and creates folders or subfolders with our takeoffs inside so it makes it easy to locate later. The first option we have underneath the takeoff tab is to choose the destination folder that this particular takeoff will be saved. We currently have three choices, absolute, current, and default. If we choose absolute, Practicat is going to prompt us to pick exactly where we would like this one specific automatic to go. You'll notice when the absolute is checked, a field is open and so is a dialog box. If in fact we choose one of the other options, it is no longer available and grayed out. So what we're going to do is choose Absolute. If we choose Absolute, Practicat is simply going to say, choose your destination folder. We're going to click on the dialog box, Windows will open up its browser. We're going to say under the C drive, PCAT training video folder, PCAT export folder. That's where we'd like this particular takeoff to be saved when we press the OK button and run the export automatic. So we're going to press OK. Once we press OK, Practicat is going to list it right here. You will notice also underneath Sample that at all times, Practicat is going to show you the destination folder and names as you choose your options in the takeoff window. So currently we're going to say we want this export automatic to send this takeoff to the PCAT training video folder slash PCAT export folder. The option to choose current is the second one on the list for the folder options in takeoff. Basically, if you do not want to choose the name of the folder or the path that you would like to send your takeoff, you can always select current and Practicat will save your takeoff in the default temporary folder where Practicat data is stored. You can see this path by coming over here to sample and you can see that under the C drive, users folder, the name of the customers folder, app data folder, local, and all the way down to the temp folder. This is where data can be stored as a temp folder for Practicat. It is very rare for a user to utilize this option. Virtually all users will define the folders they would like their data stored, especially because they'd like to create folders and subfolders. However, there is a default temp folder that is created when you do download Practicat in that location, and if you choose to use it, you can select the option for current. The last choice we have for folder options in the takeoff tab is the option to choose the default folder. We're going to check default. You'll notice that when we check default, once again, the top area is grayed out, and you can see underneath sample where Practicat is going to send this particular takeoff. You can see here it's sending it to the folder PCAT training video, but then it's going to send it to the folder PCAT default export folder, different than the one we were using for absolute. Now right here you'll notice that there is not a dialog box. So we do not choose the default folder from the auto takeoff icon. The default folder is actually selected underneath my libraries. So to show you where that location is, we're going to exit out by hitting cancel. We're going to come up to the library icon on your Practicad ribbon. On the left hand side, we're going to go to our browser, we're going to go down to Automatics, we're going to hit the little plus key, and we're going to take a look at the Export Automatic. If you click on the word Export, which is the header, you, underneath the plus key you can see a list of automatics that are on this particular desktop. If you click on the word Export, here you'll notice that we have the same folder options as we do in the Auto Takeoff section. And We're going to open up our browser here. We have the same absolute and current options. Now there's a separate tutorial on this section and it will become clear why choosing a default folder can be very efficient. But the basic of this tutorial is to show you that whatever you have selected here and here you can see PCAD training video folder slash PCAD default export folder. Whatever selected in this section, if you choose 
the default option when you're in auto takeoff, this button here and you're running that automatic, if you choose the default folder option, it's going to send that takeoff to whatever folder you've selected here. Once again, there'll be separate tutorials on the explanation of why this can be useful. Once you've selected the proper choice for your folder options, and we know the main destination folder we're going to send this takeoff to during the automatic, we now need to tell Practicad whether or not we'd like to create subfolders inside the main destination folder. Currently, we've got Absolute selected as our folder option. We have got PCAD training video folder as the main, and underneath that, we must have a subfolder created in Windows called PCAD export folder. If we run this automatic right now by pressing OK, all the takeoffs are going to go right to this PCAT export folder. However, if we would like during the course of this automatic for Practicat to create an additional subfolder, we can come into this field and create one. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the dialog box. We're going to open it up. When we click on that, Practicat opens up the folder field. Now the options inside the folder field are identical to that inside the custom tagging field. There are a few differences, but the way text properties, property properties, and function properties work, all of these fields and how expressions are built are identical to custom tagging. So it's very important to watch the tutorials on how to create custom tags field box. If you've watched those tutorials, the remainder of this video should be very easy to follow. What we're going to do is we're going to go into property to show you a couple differences. Instead of having the properties of fittings or architectural items, here we basically have the properties for drawing name and job name. And then we have the properties for time increments. We have day, month, and year. And we have hour, minute, and second. And as long as the clock is set right on your computer, you can utilize that clock Practicad will report those properties and they can be used to name subfolders. To start this tutorial, we're just going to use one subfolder. And we want the name of that subfolder to be job name. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the ampersand. And when we do that, Practicad is going to put the job name, whatever it is at that time, the job we're working on currently is called Practicad Training Videos. And it's going to show up in the subfolder field. It means there's going to be a folder created, and the name of that folder is going to be called Practicad Training Videos. And that folder is going to be inside your main destination folder we have up here, which is PCAT Export Folder. You can take a look at the sample, and right here in that field, it's showing you the entire path that the takeoffs are going to go to if, in fact, you press OK right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to press OK. And if we go and press OK again, and we look inside our hard drive, we're going to find under My Computer, C Drive, PCAT Training Video Folder, here's the PCAT Export Folder, and you can see that it's created an additional folder based on job name. The job name you can see because right up here in the workbox we're opening up, it's called PractiCAD Training Videos. So it took that property job name and it created a subfolder. If we open that up, here we have the list of all of the group names and takeoffs that we had been doing in earlier tutorials. So we can always use subfolder to create a folder inside our main destination folder. Next we're going to show you how to create multiple subfolders. So far we've created one subfolder called Practicad Training Videos. This subfolder is working underneath our main destination folder. To create multiple folders, we're going to go back into the dialog box. We're going to open it up. And instead of job name, we're going to add more to this to create more folders. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the symbol you need in order to tell Practicad that you're trying to create a secondary subfolder. There is no limitation to the number of folders Practicad will design on your export automatic. What we need to use is, for text, the little backslash. Everything you put inside this text field, other than this backslash, currently, will be placed inside the name of that folder as text, as you see it. However, backwards slash is an illegal character for Windows. When you go to use backwards slash inside this particular section, you are telling 
Practicad to tell Windows to create another folder. Now whenever you're going to put a slash between two subfolders, you're actually going to need to use the plus key. In the tutorials for custom tagging, we explain that whenever you go to combine a text field and property field, you must use the little plus key. And the same rules apply here. So we're going to go into the expression next to job name, the property job name. We're going to hit the plus key. Notice when we hit the plus key that instantly Practicat has erased all information out of the subfolder. It's also out of the sample field. The reason is this expression is currently not correct. We need to add to it. It is always a good indication if you're doing things correctly, if in fact you can see the subfolder names right here in these fields. If you do not see anything here, it is not going to work when you run the automatic. So we've got the plus key. We're now going to combine this property with text. We use the plus. We're going to hit the ampersand. We're going to put that backslash in there. And when you do that, you can see that we're getting the expression correct again, and it's showing us the name or the job name of the subfolder. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the plus key again because we're about to combine text with property again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to say we'd like a folder with month and year. Now there's two ways of doing this. First, we can say let's see the value month. We go to property, we pick month, we hit ampersand, we put it in there. Now you'll see that when you pick the property month, that means the number of the month. Currently it's October, it's showing the number 10. However, if you would like to see the name of the month, we've added a month name function. And if you use this function, it will take the number and instead report the name. For example, we're going to go back into the expression. We're going to hit the backslash just to delete the last part of that expression. We're going to say let's use the function month name. And here we're going to hit the ampersand. You'll notice the other two functions, if then else and either or, they are covered in the tutorials in custom tagging. So the only one currently we have that's different is month name. When we pick month name, you can see that our cursor will usually as a default be right in between the two parentheses. All we need to do is in that field, put the property month. And if we do that, you can see that Practicat is going to not report the number, it's going to report the name of the month. So what we've got here is one subfolder, which is Practicat training videos. And because we have split it with the slash, it's going to create another subfolder here so far only called October. What we're going to do is we're going to click outside this expression. We don't want to put anything else between the parentheses. We're going to hit the little plus key. We're going to go into text and we're going to put a little dash. And then we're going to hit the ampersand again. And then we're going to hit the plus key one more time because every time we combine text with property, we must have the plus key. So we've got the text little dash and we're going to say we'd like to see the year. And we're going to put that property in there. So you can see right here that we're going to basically have two subfolders. One's going to be called Practicat Training Videos because that's the job name currently. The other folder is going to be called October 2011 because that's the current month. Now, if we were to press OK, run this automatic, you'll see that we have additional subfolders created. We're going to go into My Computer. We're going to go into the C Drive. We're going to go into the PCAT Training Videos, PCAT Export folder. Here's the job name. And here you can see the next subfolder, October 2011. So we've created two subfolders. And inside that last subfolder is where we get the list of takeoffs. So we can use the subfolder option to create as many subfolders as we like. Once you've chosen your folder options for folder and subfolder, Practicat also gives you the ability to put in text, which will be part of the name of each individual takeoff. Thus far, the only names we've had for our takeoffs have actually come from the group name. You could see here if we click on group, we had created three groups in earlier sections of this tutorial, order, HP, and LP. And if you come all the way down to the bottom right and you look at the sample field, you can see right here that the last folder that's created is called October 2011. It's based on the month and year. And then the name of the takeoff is going to be order underscore one. Now, if we didn't have any groups created, it would just be called underscore one. Inside the folder, October 2011, we would just have underscore one. 
In that particular case, you might want to be able to give it a name. Now you can use name in this particular field in combination with group name as well. For example, here we're going to put in name, we're just going to say PCAD takeoff. And here under sample, you can get a look at what would happen. If we had no group names created and we downloaded this takeoff, when it exports to Practicam, the name of the takeoff is going to be called PCAD takeoff underscore one. The next one would be underscore two. If we've got group names created, let's just go to group, and we basically look at order, and we come down here to the bottom right, you can see here that we've got PCAD takeoff underscore order underscore one. So what we've got is we've got the name field from the takeoff tab, and then we got the group name field from the group tab. So we can have both embedded in the takeoff files name as well. You can use one or the other. It's all about how long and how much information you want to get into that file. If we press OK right now, and we go into that file and we just look at the subfolders we created. Here in the PCAD training video folder, we have PCAD export folder. We have PractiCAD training videos. Here's our last subfolder, October 2011. And in here, you can see the name of the three takeoffs. We had three groups. So we've got name PCAD takeoff underscore and then the group name HP1 for all three. So you can utilize the name field and the group name field, whichever one you like, to Make sure that your takeoffs have the proper information as they're listed. Now we're going to cover the fields for delimiter and number of digits. Currently what we've done is we've got a takeoff and in that takeoff we've got groups, three groups that are created, order HP and LP. And for the takeoff field we had already chosen folders and subfolders. And what we've done is for delimiter we've chosen nothing but an underscore. And for number of digits, we've chosen the number 1. And if you take a look on our screen and you look at the subfolder, thus far when we ran this export automatic, PractiCAD named everything by the name and the group name. And then it gives it the number 1. Now if we were to run this exact same automatic again, we're just going to press OK and run the identical automatic. And we come right back into this folder you'll see that PractiCAD has simply downloaded the same takeoff with the same three groups. However, PractiCAD has raised the numeral to two. So it's doing an automatic count for us as we download. If we run the same takeoff again, it's going to be three more takeoffs added to this field, except it's going to say number three. Now, if we would like to control the way these numbers are used and the spacing is used between the name or group name and the number or delimiter, we can go and change the options here. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we get back into our icon for auto takeoff. And right here what we're going to do is we're going to say we've got the choice for delimiter. Watch what happens in the sample field right here at the end if we add a couple more of these underscores. You see, basically, it's just going to add. The delimiter is nothing more than what we want to use to separate the last part of our name and the number of the takeoff. Because practically, it's always going to associate each takeoff with the number, and the number is going to keep climbing incrementally on its own. So we can always choose the spacing. So here, what we're going to do is just leave it a little bit longer as before. And then we can choose the number of digits. You can see we have the number one. That's because it's one digit. If we said two, you would get a zero 01. If we said three digits here, you're going to get zero zero 001. And of course, the next takeoff will be zero zero 002. So by controlling the limiter and number of digits, you can control the way the number at the end of your takeoff name is viewed inside the folder or subfolder. The show fittings before export option is a very simple option that simply displays the fittings that we're about to download before it actually downloads them. In all of the tutorials thus far on the takeoff tab, we've had this box checked so that we can show you what we're about to download. Here what we're doing is we're pressing OK. And when we do that, this export field is appearing because we have that option checked. If we don't check that option, it will not show us this export field and it will simply download the takeoff directly to Practicam. A couple of good options about this field is first you can toggle between the groups 
and that helps you to make sure that everything you wanted to download is going to download. You can also select using the checkbox what you would like to download and what you wouldn't. If we come over here and uncheck this particular spiral duct fitting, this spiral duct fitting will not download. So you basically can change your mind at the last second that you do or don't want to download something. You also have the ability to edit the file path. Currently, everything we've designed in the auto takeoff section is dictating the proper folder, subfolder, the entire file path that this particular group of fittings is going to follow. However, if you'd like to modify it at the last second, you can. We're simply just going to go right here by the three. We're going to delete everything up to PCAT takeoff. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call it test. And we're just going to download this with test. And what we've done is we've modified the files going to the proper subfolders, but we've changed the name right here. We also can just simply go to the dialog box, click on this, and then PractiCAD is going to go to the Windows folder, and here we can choose a completely different place to save it. So we don't actually have to follow whatever we've done in the auto takeoff button. If show fittings before export, if that option's checked, we can change virtually everything here on the fly. So what we're going to do is just going to press OK, and then we'll go into the section where we're saving our takeoffs. And you can see right here, everything's downloaded as it should. However, the one we changed or edited, the last particular group, we've changed it to test, and that's just the name of this particular takeoff. So we can do a lot of different things using the show fittings before export option. However, if you want it to download directly to Practicam without that window opening up, simply uncheck it. Save fixed space format files is an option we're going to cover in later tutorials. However, if you are using this option and you do have this box checked, Practicat is going to give you the ability to create the name of a subfolder to store the barcode files. In the tutorials under Presets Libraries, we show you how Practicat can generate a unique number pertaining to each fitting which can be downloaded to Practicam for barcoding. If you would like those numbers stored, in a specific subfolder when you go to download or export you can give a subfolder name here and practicat will create a folder and put those barcode numbers there for example if we press ok and we run our export automatic and we go to the folder we've been storing everything you can see right here that it's listing the takeoffs we're downloading it's listing in text files our fixed space format the information we'd like this would be exporting to a specific system. Once again, we'll cover that in separate tutorials. However, the subfolder for barcodes right here, we named the folder PCAT barcodes. It's created a subfolder. Inside there, Practicat is going to store the number of all of the fittings that are included. So you can see here as we go through these text files, we've basically got a list of all the different fittings and their individual serial numbers. These serial numbers will be downloaded to the label for barcoding. The last option we have in the takeoff tab is the ability to set the name for catalog items as one of the following. There are three choices currently. Catalog item, catalog, and original. Catalog item means that if we took an original Practicad fitting cataloged it and created a variety of this fitting inside a specific catalog. For example, if we had taken a square it around and created a high efficiency takeoff catalog with it or an STOD catalog with it, we might have catalog items named 6 inch, 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. However, they're all part of the STOD catalog or they could all be called the original name which is a square it around fitting. Depending on which one you want to download to Practicam, you must choose the correct choice. What we're going to do is we're going to cancel out of the export automatics. We're going to go over to the library and look at a catalog. Here on the left-hand side, you can see we've opened up the organization tree, gotten down to the squared around fitting, and here we have what we would call original, square to round. If we choose original, Squared around is what's going to report when it downloads to Practicam. It'll show the squared around icon and it'll have for name squared around. If we choose catalog, it's going to report the name of the catalog. The fitting we're about to export is coming out of the STOD's catalog. This is the catalog name. 
If you choose the option for catalog item, it's going to list whatever the item is named here. If you picked an 8 inch, it's going to come out as 8 inch STOD. If you picked a 10 inch, it's going to come out 10 inch STOD. As opposed to you picking the catalog, if that's the case, it doesn't matter which one you use from this list, it's only going to report STODs. To demonstrate this, we're going to exit out and we're going to double click on this particular squared around here. What we're going to do is we're going to go all the way down to the identification parameters in the AutoCAD property box. And here you can see that the name of this individual fitting happens to be 12 inch STOD. That is the catalog item name. The catalog it's coming from is called STODs. That is the catalog name. And the original name would be what we call it in Practicat as a default, which is square to round. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the auto takeoff button and we're going to download this fitting three times. We're going to say first, let's download it using the original name that we called it, which is squared around. If we press OK, you can see here that it's going to download with the name square to round. If we cancel out, we go back into our auto takeoff tab. We download the same thing, but this time under the takeoff tab, we're going to say use catalog name. When we press OK, you can see now it's reporting as STODs. It's basically reporting right here the identification parameter catalog, STODs. If we cancel out, go back into the auto takeoff button, and this time we choose catalog item. Here what's going to happen is it's going to report the name of the fitting inside the catalog. We're going to press OK. Here you can see it's called 12 inch STOD. And that's coming of course from identification parameters name. So you can choose what name Practicad uses when it downloads from CAD to CAM. And that name will show up inside Practicam.